Bam! What's up everybody? It's me, back again for another video. Um, and in this video, we're going to go over a introduction to transactions and scripts, uh, specifically in a Cadence context, although this kind of stuff can also be applied to any blockchain. Uh, but we're going to really focus on the Cadence aspects of this. So, the question is, what's a transaction and a script? Well, um, in the previous video, we were talking about an introduction to smart contracts, um, and you probably saw that I was already kind of introducing a script, um, but I want to clarify what these are, because we're going to be dealing a ton with these uh, when we're talking about smart contracts and the blockchain and all that, and so it's good to kind of clarify what these concepts are anyway. So, I've made a little diagram here. I know it looks, I mean, it's, it's state-of-the-art, it looks amazing. Uh, but I've kind of separated it into two sections. One is for transactions and one's a script. So it's going to be a very short video. Let's just, you know, go right into it. So when we refer to a transaction, um, what we're really talking about is, you know, it, you could think of a transaction as almost like a little block of code, right? And this block of code is going to interact with our uh, smart contract on the blockchain. So if we have a, uh, you know, smart contract that lives out there, um, a transaction is almost pointing to that contract. So when you run the transaction, it's going to go and do something to that contract. And what it really does is a transaction modifies or views the state. And most often, it'll be used to modify. Um, so when you run a transaction on the blockchain, it will actually change the state of the blockchain. So it'll change the variables, it'll change where things live, um, a bunch of stuff. But it'll change the state of the blockchain. And because it does this, it actually costs money or costs gas, they call it. Um, and so when you run a transaction, you know, you can't just run infinite transactions. You can't just mint NFTs all you want. It costs money and it costs gas to submit. Um, so whoever is actually signing that transaction, it's called. And signing usually means the person that's like submitting it to the blockchain. So who's taking responsibility for it? That person uh, will have to pay gas in order to run the transaction. Um, and in Cadence, the syntax is usually... Uh, transaction, you pass it a bunch of parameters, and there's two phases, right? So there's two phases. There's a uh, prepare, and then there is a execute. Um, and we'll go over the difference between these two in a later video, but for now, you just have to know there's two um, portions of it. In the first portion, we have access to that signer, and in the second, we don't. And don't worry about this for now, but I'm just introducing it. Then we go into scripts. Well, scripts are different. Um, scripts do not modify the state. They only view the state of the blockchain. Um, so they are free. You don't need to pay to view the blockchain. Uh, so it's completely free. There's no gas. And scripts can return something. So if you want to read a variable from a contract, you can return it to your front-end client or whatever it is. And the, the, the syntax for this is public function uh, main, pass in your parameters, and then whatever return type after a colon, whatever return type it is. So you in 64, int, string, whatever it is. And you can do a bunch of stuff in here to read. So let's look at a simple example using the contract we made in the previous video, right? Where we had a hello world contract that had a, a greeting state and then two uh, pieces of logic where we're returning the greeting if we call hello. Um, and then when we deploy the contract, we're initializing it uh, like this, right? So just setting it to hello world. So we can actually redeploy this contract just to make sure that our it's deployed. And let's go into a, um, a script. So if we go into a script, remember, we're just reading stuff on the blockchain. Um, so if we want to read what greeting is, well, what we could do is just, um, you know, call this hello and, and get it. So let's log hello world dot hello, and we'll execute this, and it logs hello world. So you'll see it costs no money, it's completely free, and we're just reading stuff. Now a transaction is different. A transaction changes stuff on the blockchain. So why don't we actually add a function? We'll add access all uh, function change greeting. And we will change the greeting. Um, let's do this. So let's say uh, self.greeting uh, equals uh, goodbye world. Now, don't worry about any of this syntax uh, for now. Um, this is going to be, uh, you know, explained in a later video, so don't worry about the syntax, but just kind of get the idea that we're changing the greeting. So let's redeploy this contract so that it's different on the blockchain. You'll see it's now deployed. And if we go into our transaction, let's actually in our execute do hello world dot change greeting. All right. So um, 
why is it giving uh, this error? So change uh, greeting, it should be good to go. Okay, so it was just an error on the playground. So uh, yay, playground. <laughs> um, but let's uh, send this transaction. So the signer, right, we can rename this to signer, is going to be one of these accounts. So one of these accounts has to be responsible for changing the state of the blockchain. So let's just say that we want account uh, 0x1 uh, to be responsible. And what we can actually do is even log uh, the signer dot address so that we can ensure that it's this person who is doing this uh, state, uh, who is doing this change. Um, so let's actually send this transaction. So this account is signing the transaction and they're paying for it. Um, so you can see it logged 0x1 and let's see if it changed the greeting. So let's go back to our script and let's execute. And it says goodbye world, so we changed the state. So hopefully that makes some sense. I wanted to keep this video very short, um, but that's an intro to transactions and scripts. Don't worry about the syntax, like what public fun means or what, you know, self dot. Don't worry about any of that, but just understand the concept uh, and the difference between the two. So thanks for tuning in. And the next video, we're actually going to go into making our own uh, very simple uh, smart contract and go over the uh, syntax for that. So see you in the next one.